Hello, my name is Sarah Forgey, and I'd like to tell you a little bit today about a bacteria called Streptococcus pneumonia. So as you know in the course, we've been covering lots of different bacteria that we can see here on our roadmap. Um, so we have been looking at bacteria that have a cell wall and grow as single cells, and we have covered some of the cocci or round bacteria so far. So we haven't talked much about the gram negatives yet or the red ones on gram stain, but we have talked about the gram positives or the ones that appear purple on gram stain. So we've covered the staphylococci, which are right here, like Staphylococcus aureus and Staphylococcus epidermidis. And then in the last session, we talked about strep. And today we're going to talk about a specific strep called Streptococcus pneumonia. So it is one of the most significant human pathogens, very, very commonly found um, in the nose and throat of many humans. Um, and it has a nickname of pneumococcus because it's, it's, it's one of the most frequent bacterial causes of pneumonia. But we also know that it can cause ear infections, especially in young kids. Um, that's called otitis media. Sinus infections in kids and adults called sinusitis. And if it can escape from the lungs or the ears or the sinuses, it can actually get into the bloodstream and cause bacteremia and even seed distant sites like the meninges and cause meningitis. So when we look at the bug itself, um, it is gram positive, which means when you do a gram stain under the microscope, it looks purple. And it likes to exist um, in pairs or short chains. So you can see here in the picture that these are two cocci. Um, put together, so that's often called a diplococci as well. And like all of the other gram positives we've talked about, um, it has got uh, just a double um, wall, so that means it's got the cytoplasmic membrane, CM, it's got a thick layer of peptidoglycan, and then sticking out from it, it's got lipotychoic acids. The main virulence factor of Streptococcus pneumonia is its capsule, which is, I like to call it a sugary coat, and it sits around the outside of the bacterial wall. There are a few other virulence factors that the bug has, but the main one that you need to concentrate on is that capsule. So my memory hanger for Streptococcus pneumonia is a package of Smarties. So if you think about the bug as having a sugar coating, just like Smarties, there's actually lots and lots of different sugar coatings that Streptococcus pneumonia have. So there's actually 95 different sugar coating types <clears throat> or capsules. So think about a box of Smarties. Think about how slippery those Smarties are in your hands, and that's really how that capsule works um, to help the bug escape your immune system. So like I said, there's more than 95 different capsular types, and if you've been exposed to a streptococcus pneumonia, you've survived the infection, and you develop antibodies against the capsule, then you are, are protected if you see that capsular type again. If you're exposed to a different capsular type or a different color of Smarty, you will not have cross protection, so you will not be immune to that next bacteria. So what happens if you're exposed to streptococcus pneumonia? Let's say your neighbor has a streptococcal infection um, in their sinuses and they just happen to sneeze on you. So what can happen is if it hits your mucous membranes, like in your nasopharynx here, tongue, oral pharynx, what can happen is um, in about one-third of people the bug will get in and then you will clear it. In one-third of people you actually bump, become colonized so the bug will stay in your nasopharynx but not cause any symptoms and then in one-third of people unfortunately the bacteria will invade so it can go deeper into the lungs, it can go into the bloodstream and eventually <clears throat> into the meninges as well and cause meningitis. So here's a clinical case I was hoping that we could go through. 65-year-old woman comes to the emergency room with a three-day history of fever. She's got pain on the right side of her chest, so unlikely to be cardiac related. And she's got quite a severe cough, and the stuff that she's coughing up or her sputum is rust-colored. She's otherwise healthy, but she has smoked a pack a day for 40 years, so that's a 40-pack year smoker. Physical examination shows that she's quite distressed, so she's having difficulty breathing. Her respiratory rate is increased at 50, and when they check her oxygen saturations are quite low at about 85%. Remember, normal is usually more than 94% on Lemaire. So you put some oxygen on her and you do a full examination, 
and you check her chest exam, and when you inspect, you don't really see any abnormalities. When you percuss, um, there is dullness to percussion over the right lung base, and then there's decreased air entry over the right lung base, and when you listen with your um, stethoscope, there are diffuse crackles. So we ask her to cough up some sputum, we send it to the lab, and they actually see on gram stain, these gram-positive diplococci, you can actually see the capsule around them. And um, so we make the presumptive di diagnosis of a strep pneumonia pneumonia. This is confirmed with her chest x-ray, which you can see here, it should be getting just staying evenly black as you move down, but you can see there's a big white patch here, and when she turns sideways, it's back here. So she's got a right lower lobe pneumonia, which was consistent with her clinical findings and the chest x-ray findings now, and her sputum shows that it is likely streptococcus pneumonia. So the lab will do further tests to confirm, but we will start her on antibiotics to cover for um, streptococcal pneumonia pneumonia. She will likely need admission to hospital because she is requiring oxygen, so these need to be intravenous antibiotics. So we'll continue with more later on, but I just wanted to give you a brief uh, overview of streptococcus pneumonia, the bug, and its findings in pneumonia. Thanks.